Hi, my name is Lorenta Teodorides. I'm an assistant professor of management and organizations at the Marshall School of Business at USC. My research is focused on the process of technology innovation and the impact of technology on society. In one of my research topics, I study the role of technology as a tool employed in the process of innovation and product development. I want to talk about some of my research findings in this area and how they relate to the now pervasive topic of artificial intelligence and the future of work. Let's start out with the definition of artificial intelligence. The term was coined at a workshop at Dartmouth College in 1956. It was at that workshop that the field of artificial intelligence research was born. The insight and goal of the many brilliant researchers that came together at that event was to focus on the development of intelligent agents, namely devices that understand their environment and can learn from it in order to achieve some set goals. Currently, the Merriam-Webster defines artificial intelligence as the capability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior. The Encyclopedia Britannica provides a similar definition. Artificial intelligence is the ability of a digital computer or computer-controlled robot to perform tasks commonly associated with intelligent beings. In all cases, chief to the AI definition is the ability to perform tasks that otherwise require human intelligence. It should be clear by now that artificial intelligence is best defined in terms of a goal, that of developing machines that can perform tasks that otherwise require human intelligence. One of my favorite remarks about AI is included in what is known as the Tesla's theorem and states that AI is whatever hasn't been done yet. Larry Tesla was a computer scientist who worked in the field of human-computer interaction. His remark captures brilliantly the idea that artificial intelligence is not a new technology and importantly, its goal has not yet been achieved. We can hopefully agree that there are no machine or digital agents that can perform all tasks that otherwise require human intelligence, at least not yet, and expert opinions are mixed on the timeline estimate for this end goal. So why the hype about artificial intelligence and why now? The field of artificial intelligence experienced two other periods of excitement, one in the 60s and one in the 80s. For example, in 1965, Herbert Simon famously predicted that machines will be capable within 20 years of doing any work a man can do. We are still 20 years away by some accounts, and it seems like we have always been 20 or so years away. The reason behind the most recent artificial intelligence excitement is attributed to advancements in deep learning, an area of machine learning. I will not discuss technical details about these developments, but rather focus on the key reason why innovation scholars believe the developments spurred the current excitement and why machine learning is poised to have an impact on business and labor. Machine learning, or ML, is a prediction technology. Thus, its development can be viewed as a reduction in the economic cost of engaging with prediction tasks. In other words, the ML advancement makes it cheaper or easier to engage with prediction tasks or problems. How is this revolutionary, you might ask? The key insight is to imagine how many aspects of our lives, personal and professional, can be recast as prediction problems. The answer, many, lots of them. All we need is a bit of creative thinking. For example, the problem of self-driving cars was recast as a prediction problem. Instead of focusing on coding actions for all possible scenarios a self-driving car might encounter, the problem was reframed to have the machine predict what a good human driver would do. Certainly, there are issues with defining what a good human driver is, along with other fresh new problems, but that is for another time. The key here is the observation that the recent advancements towards the AI goal are those in prediction technology, namely in machine learning, and that there are many, many problems that can be recast as prediction problems. Now, what this has to do with the future of work? To understand how the technology might impact our lives and hence the future of work, it is not enough to know what the core function of the technology is, but also to clarify what type of technology machine learning is. Technologies are tools wielded by humans. To know how to use them, we need to understand their full potential. Once we understand that, we can then discuss when and how it is best to use the technology as a tool. Machine learning is speculated to be a special type of technology called general purpose, or GPT. GPTs are rare. They hold the potential to affect the entire economy and the social structures of a society. Examples include the steam engine, electricity, the computer, and the internet. 
ML, machine learning, is speculated to be GPT because prediction problems are pervasive throughout the economy. But widespread potential use is not a sufficient condition to be GPT. GPTs are transformational because they also enable an innovation feedback loop that sustains economic growth for a while. Specifically, GPTs not only can be used to solve problems in several sectors of the economy, but in doing so, they stimulate new ideas. They stimulate innovation in those sectors. In the case of ML, that would imply boosting innovation in industry sectors where the prediction technology can help, such as innovation in the financial sector or in healthcare. This innovation goes beyond addressing the prediction problems. Also, to complete the loop, these innovation efforts in turn stimulate ideas about the future development of the original technology. In the case of ML, that would be the equivalent of using insights from innovation in, in these application sectors to continue to advance the core prediction technology towards the AI goal. The problem is that we don't know if ML is GPT. And as it turns out, it is very difficult to identify if a technology is GPT without the power of several decades of hindsight. In a recent research article, my co-authors and I take on this challenge and propose an approach to evaluate the GPT likelihood of emerging technologies while they emerge. We find that it is not just machine learning that is likely to be GPT, but a cluster of technologies that includes big data, data mining, natural language processing, and data science, in addition to ML. Thus, any efforts to reap the GPT benefits should consider all these technologies together. Now, knowing if and which technology is the GPT is still not sufficient to reap the benefits. Realizing the GPT's potential is not a given. Historically, GPTs are not of much use by themselves. Their potential is realized when combined with other technologies, knowledge, or insights. For example, electricity without light bulbs or without circuit boards is not very helpful. Similarly, a tool that predicts well is not very useful in of itself. Remember, the GPT benefits come from that feedback loop. Thus, absent coordination between the GPT specialist and other domain specialists, the GPT potential is not likely to materialize. Furthermore, how to combine and coordinate the different domains is a choice. The technology is a tool and individuals are not passive actors in how to shape and use the tool. Hence, when looking at the future of work, it is important to remember that AI-driven changes are not derived externally. Individuals can actively shape those changes. To do so for GPTs, it requires making choices about engaging in coordinated innovation across industry sectors and strategically selecting with whom to engage in such a collaboration. It also requires organizations to understand that the coordination effort takes time and is costly, hence it requires dedicated financial commitments and the benefits will not accrue immediately. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, ensuring all the pieces are in place requires, requires alignment between different levels within the organization. Incentives need to be aligned internally to enable successful engagement in such a complex coordination effort. I'll go into a bit more detail on this last point, alignment within the organization. Workers fear job displacement while top management is excited about the growth possibilities. How to achieve alignment? An approach is to recognize that the prediction technology can be developed as a tool that primarily substitutes for labor tasks, namely by focusing mostly on automating current labor tasks, or one that also complements labor tasks, namely by embracing innovation to imagine new possibilities. The true GPT potential benefits rest with the latter. Hence, organizations would benefit from carefully making and communicating these choices. Certainly, this is easier said than done, and it, all, and it all boils down to alignment in incentives. But not understanding these dynamics can lead to missing out on benefits that GPTs can bring, or even worse, following a path of technology development that are detrimental rather than beneficial for the economy and society. For example, in my research with the same co-authors, we look at the adoption of ML across industry sectors and find healthcare to be significantly lagging despite a narrative in the press that envisions applications in healthcare that significantly boost the quality of care. 
The disconnect is explained, at least in part, by misalignment. Some healthcare professionals fear a path of ML development that favors substitution with little opportunities for complementarities, while others root for a path of development that favors complementarities. To move forward, these differences need to be understood by all parties involved and the incentives aligned top to bottom. Another example I tackled in my research comes from scientists and research institutions. My co-author and I find that the path favoring complementarities is a natural choice when the technology is used as a tool in innovation. The difference in this setting is that scientists, unlike employees from several areas of the private sector, have a lot more freedom in choosing their work tasks and more decision power in making changes. By enabling complementarities, the tool not only makes it easier to perform the task where the tool substitutes for labor, but also allows scientists to focus on other tasks of their choice. The end result, an increase in scientist productivity and in diversity of research trajectories. The latter is especially beneficial because it enables broader search for discoveries that can ultimately advance the quality of life. All in all, the recent advancements in AI hold tremendous potential, but realizing this potential is up to the choices we make. It is these choices that will shape our lives and the future of work.